start from the area. Located on the northeast of the Mediterranean, the Amuk, which is currently in the Hatay province of Turkey, is a very fertile plain, uh, to which three rivers flow into the Karasu from the north, the Afrin from the east, and the Orontes from the south, connecting this plain to the north, to the Amuk plain, to the Quake plain in Syria, and to inner Syria through the Orontes valley. The plain following the Orontes Valley opens then to the Mediterranean in the southwest. The period presented here concerns mainly three centuries, from the mid-14th to the mid-11th century BC. During this period, the region underwent large-scale political changes. From being a Mitannian vassal state, with its own dynasty located at Tel Achana Alalach in the 14th century. It was then conquered by the Hittite Empire and became in 1320s a province under the control of the vice royalty of Carchemish on the Euphrates. With a collapse of the Hittite Empire at the end of the 13th century, the area became then independent and by the 11th century was part of a kingdom called Walistin, with capital at Tel Tainat, only one kilometer north of the former capital Alala. The data set on which this analysis is based refers to the results of the four excavation campaigns carried out by the Oriental Institute in Chicago in the 1930s at the site of Chatal Huyuk, located at the entrance to the Afrin Valley on the eastern part of the plain. More than 16,000 pot shirts and over 3,000 small finds were brought to the Oriental Institute, together with all documentation, drawings, photos, and notes of the excavations campaign. I could study this material during a project started in 2007, concluding in 2013. This site is a large mound of approximately 1.2 hectares, that's only the Acropolis, with a lower town on its western side, which has never been excavated. Four areas and several trenches were extensively excavated at different depths, revealing a continuous occupation from the 15th century BC to the 5th century BC, followed by, then by a Hellenistic and Byzantine settlement. A small base <laughs> trench that you see in red on the map revealed also an occupation dated to the end of the 4th millennium, suggesting a long history of the settlement. The general dating of the excavated layers has been carried out on, first, the base of the local stratigraphy, second, comparison with assemblages from neighboring sites, and third, and only as a terminus postquem, on imports, which were found in all levels and all areas. LB2 context were reached only in two areas and exposed over several building phases. But while the small extent in area 5, which you see here, was really too small to understand the use of space, the stratigraphic evidence of area 2 provides more information. It presents a large building with storerooms destroyed by fire, followed by a burial area, possibly connected with the above pebbled open area with large mud brick silo. Pebble floor are frequently renewed until the open cart is rearranged with new silo, new scattered inhumation and two domestic units. This evidence suggests that at least this part of the settlement underwent a kind of change, spatial change from a large well-built structure to scattered domestic occupation. In terms of pottery assemblages, this LB2 phase shows a very local tradition of single serving drinking and eating bowls made of simple ware, and it is the SW marked in the diagram, with no surface treatment, very conservative from the LB1 tradition. In the table set, the only group of painted vessel you see is the PM in the, in the percentages, are biconical craters. They represent a further development of the so-called Syro-Silesian painted tradition and are characterized by geometric patterns, red or black, carried out with a very thin brush on lip and shoulder parts. 
The second shape with the surface decoration is again a multiple serving container and these are plates, either plain red or with a red and varnished horizontal band on the rim, also belonging to a very local tradition dating back to the LB1-2 in Telachan. The imports in this last phase of the Late Bronze Age represent barely a 1% of the whole assemblage and show mainly one place of origin, which is Cyprus. Red monochrome bowls with wishbone handle, wax lip, two milk bowls, red lustrous spindle bot and one base ring jar are the only imported shapes. They may occur both in funerary and in domestic context. Not one single shirt of Mycenaean pottery was found in this context, although this should be the period of the cultural coine when the Mycenaean imports to the Levant reached their climax. So, is this the result of a specific resistance or of the fact that the exposed surface was very little or of the fact that Chatavuyuk was only a village? In order to try to answer this question, we may enlarge the picture to the region and to the northern Levant in general. The closest and most connected settlement is the site of Telachana, ancient Alalah, located 10 kilometers to the west of Chatel and excavated in the 1930s and 40s by Woolley and since 2005 by a Turkish mission under the directorship of Aslihan Yenea. The Late Bronze Age site delivered many Mycenaean imports, which have been recently reanalyzed by Özgünel and Kohl. All these imports, which is a minimum individual number of approximately 85 containers, date no later than the late Helladi 3A2 period. On the one side, they obviously prove a connection to the Mediterranean during the 14th century. Uh, probably still through the port of Minet Beda and the Orontes Valley, I would suggest. But they suggest also an interruption or a strong decrease of these imports at the beginning of the 13th century with the late Haladi 3b1. Even if recent archaeological excavations have clearly shown that the site of Alalakh underwent just like Chattel, a process of reduction and partial abandonment during the 13th century, it seems noteworthy that the Amok Plain experiences the absence, or the very little quantity, of late Eladi 3B imports, especially when compared to what happens just south of the Orontes Valley at Ugarit. So Ugarit is considered, just quoting Leonard, the major player in a Levantine coastal trade in the 14th and in the 13th century. The presence of these imports is also attested along the Orontes Valley, not mentioning that you see on the map, um, highlighted in red, not mentioning obviously all the imports in the uh, southern Levant. So if the late Ladi 3B1 production was still part of the Mycenaean coine and trade, and the major moment of spread of Mycenaean pottery, why at Alalakh imports stopped at the end of the 14th century, and why at Chatalhuyuk there are none? Making a thesis from an absence, so ex nihilo, is very difficult. However, we, we may give a look of the, on the Mycenaean imports in the Hittite Empire. While in Western Anatolia, which was not part of the Hittite Empire, there, is, there are plenty of imports, Anatolia, and especially Cilicia, which was directly connected to the Mediterranean, experienced the same paucity of Mycenaean imports. So, quoting a King Kozal, although there are not enough data to prove it, the reason might be not related just to geography, rather be geopolitical, in other words, re related to the Hittite policy. As a matter of fact, if we consider that the, that the Hittite conquest of the Amuk was definitely established by 1320s, so at the end of the 14th century, the possible drop of imports, at least in Alala, could be related to this change in the political situation. However, resistance might be a too strong word to define it, because it would imply that the local community, being strongly influenced by the Hittite presence, intentionally refused Mycenaean imports. 
This seems not to be the case because the impact of hittite pottery production in the AMUC, in the LB AMUC, remained limited to very specific functional categories. By contrast, for example, the North Levantine tradition of visually emphasized the crater as the main element of the table set and a possible symbol for social distinction, as it has been amply discussed by still among many others, it is well rooted in chattel assemblage, even without the Mycenaean imports, because we have just local painted craters. Therefore, I would prefer to hypothesize a decrease in connectedness between the Amuk and Ugarit. Ugarit had a different political relationship to the Hittite Empire, and when it obtained as a reward for its loyalty several territories in the northern Orontes Valley, the relationship to the Amuk plain was probably heavily compromised. This is particularly interesting when comparing with the evidence of the Iron Age 1 at Chattel. Iron Age 1 level were found in three areas, all revealing domestic architecture. In particular, in area 2, where it's possible to see the passage from LB2 to Iron 1, a slow process of densification of the settlement is visible. The blue is the Iron 1 walls without clear bricks. New houses are added, old ones rebuilt, storage facilities and large open areas give the pace to a denser settlement. The visual impact of the pottery assemblage, by contrast, changes. The earliest assemblages from all three areas shows that locally produced painted pottery, which is PM in the graph, strongly increases in number, variety and production. Craters develop by keeping a local painted tradition of cross, hatch and triangles that you see on your left, and also by introducing new motifs such as the wavy line between bands, this is bottom left, or figurative patterns ranging from very Mycenaean as the bird and the panel to a composition of bird and fish on a row to very geometrized capreds on the top. And also with the introduction, as you see, of a different shape, not only biconical craters, but also amphoroid craters. But the main change takes place in the single portion bowls. Here, not only patterns are strongly bound to the late Helladic 3C middle advanced the repertoire, but also new Mycenaean shape are introduced, such as the bell-shaped bowl, the shallow angular bowl, or in much smaller number, the feeding bottle. These foreign shapes coexist and intermix with local variation of the local S-shaped bowls that you see on your left, conical plates and shallow bowls which become also painted. Everything which concerns the table set becomes eclectic, hybrid and mixed between local and Aegean, but only the table set, and here you have an example of a very mixed uh, pot stand. In fact, none of the local habits seems to be affected by this strong influence. Food preparation, storage, transport, space organization, fire installation, they all keep local traits. In contrast, for example, to what Yazul Landau has emphasized for the Southern Levant. However, there is no doubt that knowledge transmission on Aegean shapes and patterns took place on the site through people and not through objects. Imports are also very low and the painted vessels are all locally made. The retrieval of a pottery kiln clearly shows that the painted bell-shaped bowls and feeding bottles were produced together with local jars and plates. And here you have two wasters as an example. However, why a local community with its own tradition that you see in the LB may want to embrace the visual impact, but only the visual impact of a foreign table set, um, even if small groups of migrants were living among them? The answer to this question may be searched in a general political situation. Probably already during the mid-13th century, the region underwent economic crisis, which caused ruralization, drop in production, and <coughs> political instability. So the local community was weak, both in, in terms of both political and community identity. By the mid-12th century, the town was not only sh regaining a better economic condition, but had already started a new process building a new identity, the way people cooked, stored, lived, remained deeply rooted in the local tradition, 
power was communicated with the Luvian writing and the southeastern Anatolian iconography, in other words, the Hittite legacy, but the country was called with a term, Wallistin, which seems to be strongly related to a term used to define one of the so-called sea people, and the visible perception of the table set was at least new, having Aegean and local elements already mixed and hybridized. If this last element is related, quoting Muhlenbruch, to a legendary or positively valued Aegean world, or, as I may suggest, to the social role of a specific group of people during the period of identity formation, this remains to be still to be proved. But if resistance was for the late Bronze Age a too strong definition, acceptance is for the Iron Age even not correct. The Aegean table set was received, transformed, and employed to build the material identity of a new community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.